All right, guys, in today's video, what we're going to be doing is replacing this brake master cylinder. We're working on a 1998 Chevrolet Cheyenne. We're actually doing both jobs, the master cylinder and the booster, because of a failure in the booster, most likely due to a leak in the master cylinder. But we're going to do them as separate videos here. I'm going to do the master cylinder one first, and at some point in the future when we get the brake booster one done, I'll link it up in the upper right portion of the video with the little circle eye that you can tap on. In order to get this guy out, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop off the cover. I'm going to be using one of these brake syringes, and we're going to drain off all of the fluid that's inside the reservoir to cut down on the mess. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open the master cylinder's reservoir cover, and we're going to take note of how much brake fluid that we have left in here. Now, this particular one is relatively full, but yours may be lower depending on the wear of your pads and your shoes. The reason for taking note of that is when you put the level back in, you want to get it the same way it was. If you overfill it and you end up changing the shoes and you compress the caliper, it's going to overflow, right? That sort of thing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out the fluid that's in the master cylinder so we have less of a mess. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can go about this procedure. I'm just using a, a brake master cylinder syringe, which is designed for this purpose and also doing bleeding. Now you can also try just, you know, removing these bolts and pulling this up and trying to fold it back. But I'll tell you, if there's any corrosion on these brake lines, you run the risk of it giving out and then you got a larger job. The other thing you got is if you don't do it right, you can end up kinking the lines and create an a restriction, and you end up having to replace the lines. Yeah. So I'm just going to continue getting all of the fluid out of the reservoir, and we'll come back. All right, guys, you want to make sure that she looks empty like this. Be sure you get your syringe down into the orifice so that you can suck some of this out of the main cylinder bore to cut down on the drips when we remove it. At this point, we can put our cover back on go ahead and start disconnecting everything. All right, next we're going to take a breaker bar with a 15 millimeter crow foot flare nut type of fitting. And we're going to break the torque on these two fittings here. Once we've broken the torque, I'm going to switch to a regular wrench and get them off. After we get these two off, we're going to cap them, and then we'll proceed to do the, uh, the two nuts in the back here. There shouldn't be too much leakage if we got everything vacuumed out with the syringe. There'll be some, but not a lot. And we'll leave this rag under here to catch whatever is residual. Now we'll take a 15 millimeter wrench. We're going to work these nuts off that attach the master cylinder to the power brake booster. There's two on each side. Excuse me, there's one on each side, total of two. Misspoke there. Now they can be on there uh, pretty hard if you got a lot of corrosion. This one's not so bad. You can usually tell when they're where you can take them off by hand. After we get the other one off, first thing we'll have to get out of the way is this uh, bracket that you see here that's holding one of the main wiring harnesses down below. It's got like a little hook on it. All right, let's get the other one off and then we'll show removing the bracket. All right, guys, it's handy to have several different tools available because of the brake ho the vacuum hose here. We had to switch to a, a ratchet and a socket and an extension to get this one. But we got it. All right, so now with that guy off, make sure our lines are up and out of the way. Now we can get this bracket off. Just kind of let it sit down here. And then we just work the master cylinder off, just like that. There's no gasket or anything here on the back. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the bench and I'm going to show you how to identify the different kinds of master cylinders. But one thing we can see in here with all of this staining is we can be pretty confident that this guy was leaking. So it was a good idea to swap him out along with the booster. All right, so let's get our lines capped off and let's go to the bench and show how to identify the different types of master cylinders. All right, guys, so here's the boot master cylinder that we took off. And in order to identify the replacement, there's a couple of things you want to take note of. One is this sticker on the front that says WK. If it's an original one, that's going to tell us something about the type of master cylinder this is. The other thing that you can take note of is the casting number underneath, 18012985. And there's a date here, just for your reference, May 12th, 1998, right? That would be the casting date. But that's just an FYI thing. Notice how the master cylinder casting is completely uniform on the bottom half of the aluminum, all the way over, right? That's something you want to pay attention to for this particular one as well. And then finally in the back, the size of this bore. If you take a micrometer and you measure this guy, still got a little bit of residual fluid leaking out there. And you've got a snap ring in here that can mess up what you're doing, but you know, she's, she's going to be somewhere north of 31.5 millimeters. Actually 31.5. Uh, eight, I think, is the ideal number without the snap ring in there. So that's one type. And that's what's called a single bore master cylinder. This is common on the 2500 C and K, but you might also find it on a heavy duty 1500. But normally, this, the master cylinder you'd find on a 1500 looks like this. You notice this one has got, instead of being smooth, it's got a step cast into it. And this is called a step bore master cylinder. The sticker is off on the front of this, but it would normally say NA. I'll put a picture up in the uh, video when I get around to looking at another one, but it'll have an NA instead of the WK to indicate that it is a step bore master cylinder. And the other indication is the size, right? So even though this is a down, downgrade performance wise, it looks bigger, but the reason is that it's going to be about 40 millimeters in the back. And again, you know, we're going to have the snap ring getting in our way here, but. You know, just a little over 40 millimeters. This is a 40 millimeter bore right up to here, and then it's smaller for the rest of the way. It's basically 40 and then steps down to 28.6 millimeters. So this was this master cylinder would be referred to as a 1.125 inch bore or a 1 and 1 8 inch bore. Whereas the one we took off our K2500 would be referred to as a 1 and a quarter inch bore or a 1.25. But the main difference is single bore, step bore. 1500 trucks, 2500 trucks, but you can also find this on a heavy duty 1500, like a 1500 Suburban with a 6.5 liter diesel will have this. The other type of master cylinder out there is for the 3500, and it's easy to spot because it's obviously much larger than these two, right? Much larger reservoir. It is also a single bore design. It's going to have a TC code sticker in the front, and it's going to have a casting of 1801289.85. This one here was made 11 28, 1999. It came out of a 2000 C25, excuse me, C3500, but it's got a similar bore size to our K2500 one. Larger reservoir, though. Same casting number on the master cylinder bore different reservoir. So that is how you tell them cosmetically. Now how can you tell them um, otherwise? Maybe you're not comfortable doing it like this. Well, there will be a code in the glove box. It's called a regular production option code, an RPO code. And this type of 3500 cylinder is going to be identified with the code JB8. This guy is going to be identified with either JB7 or JD7, depending on whether you have a vacuum booster or a uh, um, a hydraulically powered hydro boost booster and this one will be identified by JB5 and JB6 and again I'll put some pictures up in the video to show these different codes but that's how you identify what you need in the description I'm going to be using an AC Delco part 
Ray Bestos is the OEM supplier for AC Delco, and I'll show the AC Delco and the Ray Bestos part numbers for all three of these. But let's take a look at the one we're going to be using. All right, our replacement on this single bore master cylinder is going to be a GM1917104 or AC Delco 18M712. I'll put links in the description for this as well as the other types so that it can cover your truck as well. What you'll get in the box, this is a brand new master cylinder, not a remanufactured. I recommend on a master cylinder you try to get new rather than remanufactured. We can see single bore design, no step. And we can visually inspect our bore looks like what we would expect. We can also measure it if we are so inclined. Inside the box you will get one warning about bench bleeding the master cylinder before installing it. So um, you don't want to do this on the vehicle. There may be air inside and it can cause damage so you want to do this on a bench. That's why they got this on here. They give you a little kit with some caps that are intended to go into these two um, outlet uh, connections there that the brake lines would normally go into and then they give you some instructions on doing this bench bleeding and they got method A and method A involves putting these plugs in and then actuating the bore after you've put brake fluid in it and getting the air out that way. I don't like this way because it's very messy so they also talk about method B which is what we're going to be doing. Method B involves putting fittings with hoses onto these two and running those lines with one-way valves into the reservoir, getting them submerged and held in with clips and working the air out that way. That's the way we're going to be bench bleeding this. So let's go ahead and get this guy set up on the bench and bleed him out. All right, guys, just going to open our bag here. And we're going to mount the flange in the vise. Take our top off, make sure she's nice and tight. We're going to take these rubber stoppers out. And they tell you the sizes, right? They tell you this is the half thread and this is the 9 16 thread. And then what we're going to feed into here is the 9 16 bleeder adapter. And I'll put a link in the description to what I use for these. It's one of the few things you can get from Dorman that they can't screw up. And we'll put the one half in here. Work our hoses all the way down from the last time we used this. I'm just going to snug them up. They're plastic, right, so you don't want to go crazy. But you want to snug it up because we are trying to bleed air. And then on the ends of these, the kit comes with these one-way valves. So fluid can come out, but air and fluid can't go back in the other way. Just got to get it adjusted to where it's going to be in the right position, like so, without too much of a kink in it. And do the same thing on this one. All right, and then we're just gonna put fluid, brake fluid in here, DOT3. And we're gonna submerge these one-way valves. Now you'll see some bubbles coming out just from gravity. Now at this point, there's a couple of ways you can do this. The uh, AC Delco manual talked about taking a, a soft tool like this brass tool and actually pushing the bore in. You can do that. The other thing you can do, you can take the same tool that we used to uh, drain the fluid and we can push that down into the orifice. And we can start to try and get the uh, air out that way. 
Just make sure that you've got this thing well secured so that as you're pushing down, it's not going to come loose. Now, if you look inside, we're going to add some more fluid because we're starting to get the bore filled up here. You watch our one-way valve as we push the fluid in, we got air coming out, right? So gradually what we're doing here is displacing all of the air in the bore with brake fluid. Eventually, we won't get air out, but we'll actually get fluid. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we have no air bubbles in the clear line. You gotta be careful you don't get any air in the syringe and inject it in there. You gotta watch, you don't wanna bury it all the way. All right, so this guy, we're not getting any more air out. Now this one's a little harder to do because you don't have as much clearance, but it's the same principle. In fact, we're gonna take some of the fluid from over here. Now, see if you can see right in the corner there, as we blow this in there, there's our air bubbles. And if we look down here at our pipe, there's our bubbles coming up. Some more right there. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you don't have any more. Now, I'll leave these bubbles here to show you the same thing happens if you do this, right? So if I come in here with a soft tool and I depress this plunger, if we watch this bubble over here on the hose, and I push this in, same thing, it's gonna, whoops. I have this guy sitting in the sun, so he's kind of warm. You see, it just squirted it right in, just like that. There's another bubble there. Right, you can squirt it in that way too. So you can do it either way. The AC Delco manual that came with our uh, hose mentioned pushing it. I prefer this syringe approach myself. So I'm gonna keep doing this a few more times until I'm sure that we don't have anything left and then we'll mount it onto the booster. And now we can uh, put our master cylinder back in. We've gone ahead and left our bleeder equipment on for now. All right, and now we're gonna put this bracket underneath back on that side and that side. This is the hold up the wiring harness. And then we'll put our two nuts, our 15 millimeter nuts back on and we'll torque them down to 20 foot pounds. And then after we get these guys torqued, then we'll take off our bleeder tool and we'll put our lines back in. All right, guys, so uh, we took our cap off here. We'll do this one first. Now that we've got this guy torqued down, our 215s are 20 foot-pounds. Now we're just going to re remove our bleeding equipment. A piece of debris on the wrench there. Now you're gonna get some minor, maybe even major drippage. It's unavoidable. important thing is that we've purged the air out of the master cylinder's primary bore. Remember we got these one-way valves on so the only thing we're going to get out of here is what's in the tube itself. It's not going to suck anything out. Now you might have a little bit of a bend in here when you removed it. If it doesn't line up, go ahead and fix that because you want that flare to seat evenly. Okay, we're just try trying to get this guy up here. Get some of it to drain out. The rest of it will wash out. It's very important you wash out these tools, the syringe, and this guy with water so that the brake fluid over time doesn't attack the plastic. All right, so 
I'm just going to get it started with this crescent wrench. We're not going to do anything other than get it started with a tool like this. Once it feels like it's started, and we'll snug it, snug it up with the appropriate flare wrench, 15 millimeter. And then we will torque it with a crow foot to 18 foot pounds. What I like to do on these flares as I do them is you know jiggle them around, make sure that they're seating okay, so that they don't leak. It's another, another thing that's worth doing is you can snug it up and then loosen it. Jiggle it around some and tighten it. Do that a couple of times just to make sure that the flare end is seating properly on the new piece of the new, of the new master cylinder. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the one back here. Go ahead and take our cap off. I'll block your view for just a moment. Get this guy unscrewed. Wow, it's longer than I thought. Move our rag over to here. Same deal. We should get it where you can take it off by hand. Kind of get it somewhere where it'll be out of your way. Get your line back in. And make sure you're not cross threading anything. Again, get it started with whatever wrench you have handy. And then finish it up with the appropriate wrench. And we're going to do the same thing on this one that we did on the other. We snugged it up. We'll go ahead and get our bleeder equipment out of here first. Just make sure you don't get any of this brake fluid on the paint, of course. I think everyone knows by now that brake fluid eats up paint. But just put it out there, just saying. It's also probably a good idea to keep your goggles on. You never know if sloshing this guy around, you'll get a drop heading towards your face. All right, at this point, put the cover on so we don't get any dust on there and debris, and then we can return down to here and go ahead and do our loosen and reseating just to make sure we got a, a leak-free seal. And then again, this one, just like the other one, we're going to do 18 foot-pounds with a crow foot. Just wiggle it around. And then snug it up again. And like I said, I like to do this like two or three times. When you have old lines and a new piece like this, just to make sure. All right. And now we'll go ahead and torque it up, and we'll make sure we don't have any leaks. And at this point, guys, all we're left to do is re-bleed the system. We're going to do a power bleed on that, and I'm not going to show that because I've done another video on that in the past, and I'll link that up in the upper right area here so you can watch that. But basically, it means putting a power bleed pressure 
device on the reservoir here and going and bleeding each of the four wheel wheels, the two um, calipers in the front and the two wheel cylinders in the back. Run at least a quart through since you've changed the master cylinder, you want to do a flush of all the old fluid out of the lines. So power push at least a quart through. You might even need to do a little bit more on a bigger truck like a Suburban because of the length of the lines. Once you get the bleeds done, you're done with this project. So I hope all this information helped you out in identifying the correct master cylinder for your old body style GMT 400 type truck. And I hope this information helps you get your repair done and get your vehicle back on the road. If you got any questions, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to help. And as always, thanks for watching.